Good evening, everyone. A police informant in the Cassie Hansen murder case is running for her life tonight. Well, last November, six-year-old Cassie Hansen was found murdered in a St. Paul dumpster. Her killer has yet to be charged. Tonight, we present the story, a part of the murder investigation. It's a story of a former St. Paul masseuse, Dorothy Noga, who says a key suspect confessed the killing to her. And later says Noga tried to kill her to keep her quiet. Caroline Lowe has Dorothy Noga's story. Dorothy Noga says she first met the suspect about 3 o'clock in the morning of last November 10th, several hours after Cassie Hansen disappeared from a midway church. At the time, Noga was working the all-night shift at Lee Lenore's sauna on Snelling Avenue a couple blocks away. She says the suspect gave her his business card and said to call if she ever needed his services. During the brief meeting, Noga says the man was shaking and seemed very upset, but she says she gave very little thought at the time to her visitor. However, Noga learned a few days later from police that the man was a suspect in the strangulation death of Cassie Hansen and that his attorney would not let investigators question him. Noga volunteered to give the man a call to see what she might be able to find out. And to go on. Her first conversation was on the phone and was not recorded. During that talk, Noga says the man sounded very upset, but told her he could tell from her voice that he could trust her. And within minutes, Noga says the man gave her a detailed account of how he had killed Cassie Hansen. He said that he always knew, you know, his problem, that's what he called it. He always knew it was going to come to that someday. But he said he didn't mean it, and then he, he blamed it on to her. He said, well, it was her fault. Noga says she was shocked by the alleged confession and immediately called the police. Investigators then gave her a tape recorder and told Noga to continue to question the man about the murder. For the next several weeks, the woman met with a suspect at two midway saunas where she worked and also talked with him on the phone for many hours. As time went on, Noga says the man became increasingly suspicious and resentful about her repeated questions about Cassie Hansen. Finally, in the early hours of December 13th, Dorothy Noga received a phone call here at the Comfort Center sauna. During that call, which was not recorded, she says the suspect told her that he knew that the earlier conversations had been taped. I said, if you trust Noga me, also claims the I caller admitted I once again that he had killed Cassie Hansen. At that point, Noga says she urged the suspect to confide in the police and get some help. And he got really mad at me, and he said, that does, and he said, he said, now you've asked me about it for the last time, he hung up the phone real mad. Within an hour of that phone call, someone tried to kill Dorothy Noga. When police arrived at the Comfort Center sauna, they found Noga lying in a pool of blood. She had been stabbed several times. The main artery from her neck to her brain had been severed, and she was near death. Noga was rushed to St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center. And although she was barely alive, police say Noga wrote the name of the Hansen murder suspect on a piece of paper when they asked who had tried to kill her. But for the next several days, Noga could remember few details about the assault or who had done it to her. However, in the months ahead, she began to gradually regain her memory. And Noga now says that the man who tried to fatally stab her was definitely the Hansen suspect and that the attack was a result of her involvement in the murder investigation. While she was being attacked, Noga says she asked the suspect once again if he had killed Cassie. And, um, when he said I was going to be my, to take a look, it was going to be my last, I told him, I said, well, I said, what's the one, if you're the one that killed her, I said, well, what's the one thing only the killer knows? Well, he don't even know himself because he don't know what they're looking for. Because he said to me, he said, you just got to keep on, keep on. He said, yes, yes, yes. He said, I killed her. He said that I talk like all the rest, you know, obviously, because I said he was crazy or something. And he jammed a knife straight on in, like that in my neck, and he pulled it out. Well, then I knew, you know, and then he cut me, you know, and I turned my head like that. And he said, I'll teach you not to talk. And then he cut it, and then he slid it all the way down. That's Dorothy Noga's story. Certainly there are questions, questions about her loss of memory, questions about vital conversations that were not recorded, and questions about the description of the man who stabbed her. But police investigators say that Noga is an honest woman, and they confirm that she worked for them as an informant on the Hansen case. They also confirm that she recorded many of her conversations with a suspect, and they confirm that she signed a statement in May naming that man as a person who tried to kill her. 
a statement in which he also claims a suspect told her he had killed Cassie Hansen. Sources also verify that Noga indeed talked with a suspect not long before she was stabbed. Meanwhile, the alleged assailant is still at large, and Dorothy Noga says she is afraid, afraid that once a suspect learns that she has regained her memory about what happened to her last December 13th, and that she is prepared to tell her story in court, that he will try once again to silence her. With photographer Gordon Bartouche, Caroline Lowe, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. Well, since last spring, the Ramsey County Attorney's Office has been reviewing evidence against the suspect. The evidence may be turned over to a grand jury, but no decision has yet been made.